As Donald Trump faces the prospect of even more indictments and complains that he's being treated unfairly, it's worth remembering his hypocrisy and just how quickly and harshly he judges others. In 1989, he took out a full-page ad calling for the death penalty for five young teens who were falsely accused of brutally attacking a Central Park jogger. Years later, the young men were completely exonerated by another man's confession as well as DNA evidence. But Donald Trump has never apologized. After Trump's first indictment, one of the now exonerated five, Yusuf Salam, responded with simply, karma. Now, Salam is making his first run for political office, while the twice impeached, twice indicted former president makes his third run for the White House. Joining me now, Dr. Youssef Salam, candidate for New York City Council in the 9th District. Dr. Salam, it's so nice to have you on the show. You've said that courtesy of Trump and his full-page ads in four different New York newspapers back in 1989, you and the other members of the now exonerated five became, quote, almost untouchables. Yet the irony doesn't escape me that Trump likes to think he's also untouchable, but for completely different reasons. How confident are you? that the judicial system will actually work in Trump's cases? You know, the challenge is that we want the judicial system to work. We want the judicial system to actually be just. We want to be able to be judged by the content of our character and not the color of our skin. And in America, unfortunately, justice has always escaped black and brown bodies. You know, here we have a moment where we can almost pray for justice to work finally in a way that's meaningful. And of course, it comes in light of the fact that a former president, someone who had vilified us 34 years ago, is now being prosecuted. And, you know, I, you know, when I think about that, I think about the power that a person holds, the, the fact that people who are in extreme wealth hold extreme power and can almost affect the outcome of anything that they touch. And I think Donald Trump being indicted is, is a karma moment for many of us who've been watching from the sidelines, seeing what was going on in this country. Let's talk about the phrase double standard. Unlike most criminal suspects, when mm -hmm. Donald Trump was arraigned this past week, even before in Manhattan, he wasn't put in handcuffs. He didn't have to pose for a mugshot, didn't have to go to a perp walk. Compare all of that treatment to what you went through as an innocent 15-year-old. You know, the thing that really, really is startling and, and should be very apparent is that I represent the microcosm of the macrocosm of cases just like mine. What, what I'm thinking about or who I'm thinking about in this moment is a person like Khalif Browder. You know, when we get arrested for crimes oh. that we didn't commit, we get arrested, handcuffed, placed in central booking, placed on wherever, and then if we can make bail, we make bail and then we come out. Um, but when you're giving grace and mercy, that should really be afforded to all. There are those who have been always, you know, gifted with the opportunity to have the privilege of the color of their skin allow them to move throughout life very, very easily. But when your name is Yusuf Salam and you have the unfortunate reality of being told that you were guilty of a crime that you did not commit, we were all innocent. And the fact that we were vilified in the papers two weeks after we were accused is an atrocity. But at the same time, the double standard is that when you are wealthy, when you are white, you get the opportunity to say, I'll, I'll, I'll turn myself in, you know, or, or sometimes even if you get convicted, the judge may look at his watch and say, listen, uh, how, uh, how about you come back in two weeks to a month? Uh, make sure you have a great time, but you got to come back and, 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 and face the music. But when you're when you were found guilty, even if you're innocent like we were, we were rearrested. Handcuffs were placed on us again. And we were led to the back. And then we were put in prison. Seven to fourteen years went by before they found out we were innocent. And then it took another twelve years after that for the state to finally the city rather to finally compensate us. You know, this is this is what happens in the black community all the time. Yusuf, let's talk about then how you are ready to bring change to that community. Talk about how your experiences haven't jaded you, have, have in fact inspired you to want to actually run for public office without any prior political experience. But how has your experience informed your decision to want to serve the public? 
You know, on the day that the polls opened today, the 17th, this is a really, really powerful and amazing moment. I've often said that those who have been close to the pain, those who have paid the ultimate price, have to have a seat at the table because who is going to talk about our experiences better than those who know it very, very well? I was jaded for a very, very long time. And then I realized that it's important to understand all politics is local. The fact that a Khalif Browder, the fact that a Yusuf Salam, the fact that a, any one of us were adjudicated for crimes that we didn't commit. I think about, imagine if we were able to put the judges in office. Imagine if we were able to make sure that our communities were clean. Imagine if we were able to have the services that were, that, that the fact that our tax dollars, our tax okay. dollars should be supporting us, but rather we have divestment in our community. And so the great thing about me is that although I don't have the political experience, but this is not politics as usual. We get an opportunity when people vote me number one at the polls, right? I'm telling people, vote Yusuf Salam number one at the polls. Follow us, follow up with us on, at, at HarlemForYusuf.com. But the more important aspect of what we're talking about is whoever is in that seat will represent the future of what Harlem looks like.